Welcome back to Built to Last. And today we are checking out the Anthony Wayne Bridge in Toledo, Ohio. When I think about a city, the first thing that comes to my mind is always the city skyline. And skylines are always defined by iconic structures. For Toledo, that skyline defining iconic structure is the Anthony Wayne Bridge that carries Route 2, 51, and 65 over the Maumee River. Locals call it the high level, and originally the bridge was planned to be called the Warren G. Harding. But political scandal got hot in 1931 as the bridge completed. So the city settled on a somewhat boring namesake, a general who had been dead for 135 years. Name aside, the Anthony Wayne Bridge has always represented what the city was going for back in 1928, a statement that Toledo is a Midwestern heavyweight. The Anthony Wayne Bridge was designed by Waddle and Hardesty with assistance from Leon Moisev, famous for its work on structures like the Manhattan Bridge, George Washington Bridge, Ben Franklin, Golden Gate, and most notably, the Comaneros. The Anthony Wayne Bridge was the deepest plate girder bridge designed to date in 1929 with a 9 foot 10 inch depth. And just so you know, depth defines how tall the beams are. Construction was completed in a mere three years, speaking to how good contractors like McClintock and Marshall were getting at suspension bridge construction in the 1930s. The bridge was also fabricated from Pittsburgh's sweet Carnegie Steel. Today, the Anthony Wayne Bridge is the last remaining suspension bridge in the Ohio Department of Transportation inventory. And the secret here, it's really not a secret, it's all about maintenance. A structure can be built to last at the outset, but if we don't take care of it, it won't last. So starting in 1961 with a complete deck replacement, there have been several major overhauls of the bridge. A deck replacement involves removing the roadway and the supporting concrete slabs. No minor project. A major part of the maintenance of the Anthony Wayne Bridge has always been the annual inspection. Inspection aims to catch issues before they become problems. In 1996, the suspender cables were found to have been deteriorated by inspection. So a careful project in 1997 replaced the suspenders while keeping the bridge in service. The roadway was also resurfaced as part of the 97 project. But nonetheless, by 2012, the bridge had logged 70 years of service and was in need of another major overhaul. ODOT had an important decision to make. Plate girder approach trusses were brutal with pack rust the cable corrosion protection system was discovered to have been depleted and the deck again needed replaced. The bridge was in bad shape and demolition of the Anthony Wayne Bridge was a real possibility. But wisely, ODOT decided to preserve the bridge. Plate girders, like those in the Anthony Wayne Bridge, are especially susceptible to pack rust. Pack rust occurs between the plates like you see here. And the rust is even strong enough to break rivets potentially compromising a plate girder and subsequently the entire structure. The restoration project addressed pack rust throughout the bridge with routing, caulking, and an estimated 250,000 bolts installed in place of damaged rivets. The pack rust infected Warren trusses were too far gone and they were replaced with conventional welded steel beams. Now purists have criticized the Warren Trust replacement, noting an alteration of the bridge's aesthetics, but realistically the aesthetics here were a small price to pay to keep the bridge in service. Also, the entire deck was replaced with the new lightweight concrete to reduce dead load on the bridge. Fusing modern innovation into the old structure extends the lifespan of the Anthony Wayne Bridge. And the most interesting part of the nearly three-year renovation project was the retrofit of a dehumidification system for the main cables. In a suspension bridge, the cables are the single most critical component, holding up the entire structure. The dehumidification system circulates air through the cable wrap to maintain humidity at or below 40%. No moisture means no corrosion of the critical cables. The total price tag of the renovation was over $50 million, but maintaining a skyline's icons and the city's civic pride is something of immeasurable value. Could we really imagine the Toledo skyline without the Anthony Wayne Bridge? So while the 1930 original construction put the Anthony Wayne Bridge on the Toledo skyline, mundane preservation efforts like repainting and rust prevention 
and massive full-scale renovations leveraging new technologies have truly kept the Anthony Wayne Bridge built to last.